Good day everyone, welcome to CSC 308. This is Information Security and Assurance. And uh, today, we are going to have our very first pre-recorded class. This is to begin our lessons about information security. And uh, today, we will be talking about Introduction to Information Security. Now, um, please be sure to watch the entire video, listen, and understand the lessons attentively. After this class, I'll be giving you assessment and assignments. My name is Jules Fubuko, your instructor. Let's get started. If you have any questions or comments, share it with the class, comment your questions down to our Facebook group post, or send it your question through our respective Facebook chat groups. So previously, when we had our or class orientation, we've talked about online and modular learning, uh, learning management systems, particularly Google Classroom, and also the use of other platforms like Facebook, uh, Messengers, etc. We've also talked about our course summary and class arrangement. And then lastly, we've talked about our course requirements. Today, we'll be talking about the introduction to security. Uh, what exactly is security? And then we'll also be strolling to the memory lane of information security. Basically, we'll be talking about the history of information security. And then lastly, we'll discuss some of the key information security concepts. So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to define security and information security as a whole. And then recount the history, history of computer security and explain how it evolved into information security. And then lastly, define the key terms and critical concepts of information security. Okay, so let's start. What exactly is security? Security is the quality or state of being secured to be free from danger. All right, so generally speaking, when we say security, it's that it's the feeling that you are free from any danger. Okay, how do we know that you are free from any danger? That is, you are. That is when you are assured that somebody or something is making, um, is doing their job to make you feel that you are secured. Okay. In other words, it is protection against adversaries. When we say adversaries, this basically those who would do harm intentionally or otherwise. That is our objective. Oh, that is the objective of security protection against adversaries. Now. The National Security Council, or NSC, it is a multi-layered system that protects the sover so sovereignty of the country, its assets, and its resources, and its people. So when we say multi-layered system, um, it means multi-purpose, multi-dimensional. Achieving the appropriate level of security of an organization also requires a multifaceted system. When we say multifaceted, having multiple feature or aspect now every successful organization should have the following multiple layers of security in place to protect its operations so when we say layers of security what are the aspects that make um, aspects that um, aspects inside the organization that should be secured okay first is physical security this is to protect physical items, objects, and areas from unauthorized access or misuse. So let's say, for example, here in Nur Zubais. So there are um, different aspects where Nur Zubais is protecting their facilities or physical um, equipments, okay, or physical assets. First is um, our guards. We have security guards to monitor who will be entering the campus that is to make sure that every everybody and everything inside the campus are safe right and then we have um, cctv cameras that monitors all the movements inside the campus now these are example of physical security there are tons of examples about sec physical security here in nurse bias those would be the two main um, examples on how the campus or the university is protecting its physical assets. Second, personal security. To protect the individual or group of individuals who are authorized to access the organization and its operation. Okay, so when you say personal security, that is from the term suggests individual or group of individuals who are protecting this individuals or group of individuals. Okay, so here in Norsebias, we have our HR, our human resource. 
that is to protect our being as workers and students inside the campus all right and then we have um, some organizations some offices also limits the access to some certain people let's say for example in north um, college of art and sciences there are only a few people who are authorized to have authorized to gain access of all the equipments assets data inside the college all right so we have the dean the faculty and staff perhaps and the um the office clerk or assistant okay so that is personal security next operation security that is to protect the details of a particular operation or series of activities all right this is very important especially when you are working on large um, organizations or businesses there are some processes that isn't told or isn't taught to another with another department let's say for example when you're when you will be working for a bpo company okay so there are well, let's say for example customer service rather there are different levels of um operations in and each level of operation have their own um particular operation that is being done all right so for example uh, from from the operations level your your job is to take calls um, be the voice of the company through your customer or your client and then the managerial um, department that is to manage or basically to oversee the operations and then we have the strategic department which is the the ones who are overseeing the entire operation for, for the long run okay so that is operation security so securing the operations of or the activities inside the organization is one of the layers of security that every organization must have or must um let's say put into perspective must give importance basically next is we have communications security to protect communications media technology and content but this is particularly um, specific when it comes to um, large organizations involving communications all right so let's say for example north the entire north system there are some uh, most of the offices and organizations will be um, exchanging communications let's say for example documents that needs to be approved by the bor or the, the university president these um, communications memorandums uh, must be protected in that way it cannot be um, it cannot be um because there are just some set of individuals that are required that are authorized to have access to it okay so communication security so how do we how do they make sure that the communications are safe okay first is they are only authorizing some people who will deliver the communication they will use a specific log in credentials for sending perhaps emails and uh, voice messages Oh, emails or fax okay and then so on and so forth all right next is network security to protect networking components connections and contents this is very um, this is very important when it comes to um, working on a system let's say for example nurse system now uh, negros oriental state university is working on making the entire university be connected as one so we'll be using one network and it, it's very important that these network will be uh, protected it's because if it's going to be compromised if it is exposed then all of the information all of the assets digital assets in for the, of the entire university will be at risk so it is very important that network security will be uh, given importance as well and then lastly we have information security Information security means to protect the confidenti confidentiality, integrity, and availability of information assets, whether in storage, processing, or transmission. It is achieved via the application of policy, education, training, and awareness, and technology. So this is what we are trying to 
learn with this course, the information security. So this, um, all of those layers of security will bring us down to information security. So for this course, this is what we are going to learn. Um, and uh, perhaps master in that way we'll be able to once you will be once we will be working on an actual organization or business we'll be able to con contribute as it or as computer science um individual uh, professional you'll be able to contribute on how you can make sure that the information of the entire um, business or organization will be safe will be secured that will be our goal okay so well before we proceed let's um, stroll down to the lane to the member lane of information security from just being computer security how it turned into information security okay so 1960s organizations start to protect their computers now the largest security concerns at this um, interval were at the points of access anyone with enough knowledge about how to work a computer could break into the facility and start accessing sensitive data since this time computers were just very new and just a few people are knowledgeable on how to use computers and there aren't much security when it comes to information so most people who own computer will just go to store their information right there and those people who know how to use computer will be will be able to easily access those information so in order to secure terminals Passwords and multiple layers of security protection were added to devices. So, to make sure that not or everybody or not everybody will be able to have easy access to any computer. So, passwords, uh, multiple layers of security protection were added to computers. And then, 1970s, the first hacker attacks begin. Although networking or network computing, like Internet or World Wide Web, do not exist yet, um, the Internet or the World Wide Web um, existed uh, by late 18 or 1980s. Umaga. Although network computing, like Internet, do not exist yet, large organizations, especially governments, were starting to link computers via telephone lines. Okay? So again, wala pa internet ani panahona. However, computers or organizations and like governments they are using computers um, to be connected to telephone lines all right recognizing this people started to seek ways to infiltrate phone lines connected to computers so that they could steal data so these people became the first group of hackers so the basically the the act of hack the very first act of hacking is infiltrating computers that are connected to telephone lines right that will be in 1970s in 1980s government become proactive in the fight against cybercrime so have it having limited information security systems to stop clever hackers government started to actively pursue hackers at this point in time the sentences weren't exactly um, harsh. They were ex very and um, exceedingly light, ranging from stern warnings to probation. So although the government has already started working on protecting or perhaps fighting against cybercrime, the, um, the, um, the, let's say the sentences, or let's say, ang ilahang sentensya sa mga mo, Mo, mo against the cyber crime is very light okay from warnings you know just warnings and then probations basically you are not um for example when you say probation um, you are not supposed to use computers for a certain amount of time so those were just the consequences of um breaking the law against cyber crime and then in 1990s organized crime gets involved in hacking. So after the World Wide Web was made available in 1989, people started uh, putting their personal information online, All right? Since internet is new, the World Wide, mes World Wide Web is new, people started to um, write information or put information online. So thus making it, making them very exposed to hacker, to the malicious users, right? 
organized crime entities saw this as a potential revenue um, revenue source and uh, started to steal data from people and governments via the web. Although firewalls and antivirus programs helped protect against this, but the web was a most unsecured and rapidly expanding network. Okay, since bago, bago pa ang uh, World Wide Web, it wasn't really secured. Everything that is new, uh, perhaps wala pa mga security layers that are being implemented, although there were firewalls and antivirus, but don't those weren't just enough when it comes to protecting personal information that is uploaded to the World Wide Web. And then in 2000s, while government had been pursuing cyber criminals for decades, most punishments were light, again, often being limited to confiscation of the computer equipment and a ban from computer use for a certain period of time. So those were just the consequences when you when you are guilty for cybercrime. Well, confiscation of computer equipments or you will be under probation or you will be banned for a certain amount of time. So it's not exactly um, heavy punishments. So this changed in the 2000s as governments started to recognize the dangers of hacking. Hackers were jailed for years as punishment for cyber criminal activity. This is different, however, in the Philippines because um, the Republic Act number 1075, also known as the Cybercrime Prevention Act of 2012, was approved, well, 2012, right? So basically in the Philippines, there were there was a delay, a huge delay, uh, na delay kumbaga dugay na sugdan ang atong protection on how our government acted upon cybercrime. Imagine it was only approved by 2012. This means there is one particular hacker that is very uh, kumbaga sikat kaayo in early 2000s and this is called Okay, there was one cyber crime or cyber crime activity, cyber criminal activity that was done by a Filipino in early 2000s. That was kind of safe. Siya. It's because the Cyber Crime Prevention Act was only approved by 2012. Okay, so let's know what happened exactly. All right, so the I Love You virus is a computer worm that infected over 10 million Windows personal computers in just. 24 hours. It is created by a Filipino college student, Onel, Onel D. Guzman. The outbreak was later estimated to have cost 5.5 to 8.7 billion US dollars in damages worldwide and estimated to cost 10 to 15 billion US dollars to remove the worm. Okay, so you can you will um, you can perhaps learn more about the I love you virus now. It so happened that I was Although it happened when I was still in, in perhaps in elementary. However, by the time that I went to high school, this was And then back then the I back then it was very kanang um siyang crime. It's because imagine one Filipino college student were able to penetrate Pentagon, was able to penetrate all the a uh, major. Um, organizations and companies worldwide and for just of within 24 hours it it um it cost 5.5 to 8 billion us dollars in damages and then fixing it cost 10 to 15 billion more all right and imagine it all happened in just 24 hours okay however since there were no laws in the philippines against writing malware at the time both Ramones, who is the accomplice, the accomplice of um, Guzman, were released with all charges dropped by state prosecutors. So, suerte na siya kayo, dako unta kayo siya, dako unta siya kayo o i-face nga kaso. However, since Philippines doesn't have any laws that protect cyber criminal or cyber crime activities, this guy, this hacker, was released. Okay, so that is very important that um, ever since the Cyber the Republic Act 1017.5 was approved, 
then all of the cybercrime activities are now being protected or we are being protected by that law against cybercrime. Okay, going back, by 2010s, information security becomes serious. Security experts started to realize that the best way to protect data was to make it truly inaccessible to hackers. To end this, data encryption, which crumbles data to render it unreadable to unauthorized users, became more widespread. So more about um, data encryption will um, discussion will be learned. Uh, more about data encryption will be discussed soon in our um, future lessons. Okay, so those are the kumbaga, the important moments of information security how computer security became information security kumbaga. all right so now let's talk about the key information security concepts so when you say information security concepts, these are just some of the concepts or terms that are essential to any discussion of information security now before we actually start learning about information security let us first understand um, the terminologies that we'll be using for the entire um, course okay so let's start with access when we say access it is a subject or object's ability to use manipulate modify or affect another subject or object authorized users have legal access to a system Whereas hackers have illegal access to a system. Access controls regulate this activity. Okay, so when we say access, it is the privilege to be able to use a certain um, asset, right? So for example, who can access your personal Facebook account? Now, it should be you. Well, only if you give your access, your credentials to your girlfriend, to your boyfriend, then it, it, you are giving them access to your personal information. So that is access. Next is asset. Asset uh, refers to the organiza organizational resource that is being protected. An asset can be logical, such as website, information, or data. Or an asset can be physical, such as person, computer system, or tangible object. Assets, and particularly information assets, are the focus of security efforts. They are what those efforts are attempting to, we are protecting, uh, attempting to protect. Okay, so asset, everything that is inside the organization things that are supposed to be protected. Okay, so let's say in Norso Baes, the assets would be the faculty, the staff, the um, the buildings, the equipments, the computer laboratories, the scientific or the science um, equipments, everything that is inside the, um, the campus or the university that are supposed to be protected. Now, we, we also have logical assets, let's say the Norso website, okay? our enrollment system, our grading system, all the systems that are being used by the university is also asset, okay? You students are also at the an example of assets for nurse bias, okay? Everything that are supposed to be protected, these are assets. Next, attack. Another term that we'll be hearing or we'll be using most of the time in this course is the term attack or concept attack an intentional or an intentional act that can cause damage to or otherwise compromise information and or the systems that support it attacks can be active or passive an intentional or unintentional and direct or indirect some casually reading sensitive information not intended for his or her use is a passive attack let's say for example Give you an email on Facebook na naka-open. Alright? And then, your friend, <laughs> your friend, um, accidentally read the messages because your Facebook is open on your computer. So that is a passive attack. There were no intention of um, accessing the information. There were no intention of reading those messages. But still, it is an attack. A passive attack, per se. And then, a hacker attempting to break into an information system is an intentional attack. So whenever a hacker um, tries to boot up, tries to um, gain access to a certain system, so that is an intentional and a direct attack or active attack. Okay. Next, we have control, safeguard, or countermeasure. 
So these are the concepts referring to security mechanisms, policies, and procedures that can successfully counter attacks, reduce risk, resolve vulnerabilities, and otherwise improve the security within an organization. Okay, so let's say, for example, um, making use of um, ID um, barcodes on the IDs in that way, um, you know, some policies or mechanisms that help um, can counter um, that will help counter the attacks. Okay, so let's say barcodes. Okay, so to make sure that um, just putting just putting in ID numbers, uh, memorize radayon. So we can either instead of just using ID numbers, we can use barcodes, right? Instead of using um, passwords, we can use barcodes, something like that. So these are just control or safeguard or countermeasure. So we have all, um, every organization must also have, uh, let's say, policies. Let's say, for example, here in, in our laboratory, you can see the policies before you enter CAS5. You will you'll be able to read the policies which is posted right by the door. Okay, so these policies are implemented to make sure that the, um, the camp Everything, every assets inside the class five, classroom five will be safe. Okay, our computer, our computers, our computers, um, and other equipments, and of course, you as a student and us as a faculty. Exploit. Exploit is a technique used to compromise a system. Threat agents may attempt to exploit a system or other information asset by using it illegally for their personal gain. Or an exploit can be a documented process to take advantage of a vulnerability or exposure, usually in software that is either inherent in the software or is created by the attacker. Okay, so when we say exploit, that is making use of a vulnerable, vulnerable, vulnerable <laughs> vulnerability of a system for personal gain. Okay, so for example, katungaina, you've left your Facebook account open. And then your friend accidentally reads it. However, this time he reads it by intention, with intention. And uh, your friend posted something on your Facebook account. So that is already exploiting the vulner vulnerability of your system, of your Facebook account. So that is exploitation. Making use of um, a system to compromise a system, right? that is exploitation next is exposure a condition or state of being exposed in information security exposure exists when a vulnerability known to an attacker is present so um you will you will know more about this perhaps in our future discussion but when you say exposure uh, whenever a vulner vulner vulnerability of a system is kumbaga, known to an attacker so let's say, for example, um, your system is your system's database is kuan kumbaga vulnerable siya. The attacker know that your system doesn't have, or I'm sorry, the database of your system, or let's say MySQL, doesn't have or uses the root password, meaning the, you ang imong SQL nagagamit siya og default na password. So that is already a vulner vulnerability <laughs> and then that is an exposure it's because the attacker know the weakness of your system so your system is now exposed next is loss a single instance of an information asset suffering damage or intended or unauthorized modification or disclosure when or on when an organization's information is stolen it has suffered a loss well it's obvious whenever you lost something whenever there are already modification or an authorized use of your um, of the system or any information inside or any asset inside the organization. And then we have protection profile or security posture, the set entire set of controls and safeguards, including policy, education, training, and awareness and technology that the organization implements or fails to implement to protect the asset. Okay, so that's why here in Nursabais. Um, usually, there are or may, not not just in Orsabais, but most of the organizations and companies or businesses are doing or conducting regular trainings about awareness about uh, information security. 
okay and then of another thing going back we have policies so this is also an example of protecting profile or security posture next is we have subjects and objects the entire set of controls and safeguards including policy education training and awareness and technology uh, so basically those are subjects and objects and we have risk the probability that something ma'am ah sige ma'am ay na rin ma'am sige ma'am the probability that something unwanted will happen uh, that is a risk organizations must minimize risk to match their risk appetite the quantity and nature of risk the organization is willing to accept so there are just some of the activities that will that that has positive and negative um, effects now risk is no is doing something that knowing that there is okay risk is doing something while knowing that there must be negative impact to it however the impact or the the positive impact overcomes to the negative impact so still the organization could be may be willing to accept that negative impact so that is risk okay kumbaga in layman's terms so when you are about to um perhaps you and your girlfriend or boyfriend or are about to move or perhaps so my term and bring your relationship to the next level it could be a risk all right so risk is that maybe what if one day <laughs> One day you'll no longer feel the same way you did or you felt when you when you meet. Right? However, the positive so basically that was the negative um, aspect. The positive aspect is that you'll be able to build a family. And then building a family overshadows the negative um, aspect, which is just the the regrets that you may um that you may have. So that is, but still you are willing to uh, perhaps bring your relationship to the next level that is the risk okay and then threat threat a, cat a, a category of objects person or other entities that presents a danger to an asset threats are always present and can be purposeful or indirect for example hackers purposely threaten unprotected information systems while severe storms incidentally threaten buildings and their contents okay so there are just lots of threats um in any organization so let's say for example for our um assets okay information so um let's say ga enroll while we are doing enrollment just just like what we did um uh, a month ago we we were doing enrollment we are enrolling students and what would be the common threat is that the loss of power supply brownout then we will we'll have to stop the enrollment right and then so those are just some of the threats or any categories or um, categories of objects or person or entities that presents danger to the asset that is a threat okay threat agent those specific instance or a component of a threat for example all hackers in the world present a collective threat while kevin mitnick which is the which is an actual hacker who was convicted for hacking into phone systems is a specific threat agent okay so let's say for example there are groups of hackers that um, that presents collective threat but specific hackers they are the threat agents and then perhaps lastly we have vulnerability there I've said it perfect this time vulnerability a weakness Weaknesses or fault in the system or protection mechanism that opens it to attack or damage. Some examples of vulnerabilities are a flaw in a software package, an protected system port, and an locked door. Some well-known vulnerabilities have been examined, documented, and published. Others remain latent. Okay, so vulnerability, that is basically um, a weakness of the system, of an organization. So... Um, let's say, for example, one vulnerability perhaps of koan of processing processing any activities. Let's say uh, processing <laughs> some man uh, online classes. Okay, perhaps one of the vulnerabilities of doing classes online is that 
um, the internet connectivity so not everybody will be able to join so that is already a vulnerable vulnerability since if you have very weak internet connectivity right so that is exam that is what you call vulnerability all right so those are just some of the concepts that we'll be um, using most of the time when we talked about when we in any discussion about information security so it's um knowing these terminologies or concepts will perhaps will prepare us ourselves to become ready when it when we are going to learn more about information security in uh, the near future in our future discussions okay all right so that will be all for today now to assess your learning kindly fill up this form you can click this link once you've already cop uploaded a copy of this presentation file the deadline would be a week from now thursday april 29th 2021 at 11 59 however this uh, form will not be available for the meantime this will be opened once this video will get a few hundred percent views that means you should watch this video from start to the end and then if the youtube statistics says that it's this video gained a few hundred percent views only that i will open this link okay so make sure to watch this video from start to finish that way we'll be able to open this form right away again deadline would be april 29 11 59 pm and then for your for your assignment you are going to find any local organization it could be either businesses or government and evaluate the layers of security being implemented again uh, going back the um, layers of security includes physical security personal security operation security communication security network security and information security so for your assignment it will be done by group you will have to find any local organization it could be business kanang business nga nasa yung tapad sa yung balay or government organization and you have to evaluate their layers of security that are being implemented okay more of these uh, more details about the assignment will be posted through our google classroom the deadline would be friday april 30th 2021 at 11 59 p.m all right so check our google classroom any day from now i'll be uploading the complete guideline for our assignment so this would be our references today all of the contents are taken from principles of information security fourth edition by michael whitman and herbert matford and some from the internet the links are on your screen right now so that will be all for today thank you so much for making this part of the video Please always keep safe and God bless us all. See you on our next class.